everyone and welcome back to Radio Tony, Tony TV and the Everyday Business Show. Today we have an amazing guest by the name of Bonnie Brugner. Now Bonnie is the founder of Binge Networks USA and her extensive resume spans from successful entrepreneur to being selected as one of the top 30 CEOs of 2020 by Silicon Review and her company has won the Innovation and Excellent Award, the Top Blog Award and Best Streaming and Monetization Platform for 2020 with multiple other awards in the past two years. She is a certified corporate performance coach with the Columbia University, a business marketing strategist, renowned speaker, branding consultant, senior mentor with the Tony Robbins Companies and Life Mastery event director in Namali, Fiji, to the four times author, triathlete and Ironman finisher, just to name the few. She's also been a guest on NBC, ABC, Fox, The New Morning Show, as well as other high-profile media outlets. In addition, she is an avid dog lover and the inventor of the Dirty Dog Antibacterial Paw Spray. She's the founder of Disrupted Mama, a foundation blog and website that advocates for change in the adoption industry. Her biggest accomplishment to date is being the mum of Olivia Grace, her seven-month-old little girl. Binge Networks TV is an incredible platform for entrepreneurs, authors, coaches, speakers, innovators, inventors, and anyone who has a voice or cause to be able to afford mainstream television advertising. Binge Networks TV offers mass exposure and personalized branding via smart TV distribution outlets and has over 100 premium platforms, which include Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Google Play, Sony, Samsung, Sharp, TVO, Philips, Sansio, Panasonic, JVC, Toshiba, and just to name a few. Binge Networks TV is distribution and monetization of your video content. And I'd like to welcome today's guest, Bonnie Bragner. Good morning. I am great. Thank you so much. It's nice to be here with everyone today. Bonnie, Binge Networks, for those who are unaware, is a streaming TV platform for distribution and monetization of video content. But I want to go back a little bit before that. What have you been doing and what led to Binge Networks? Yeah, so I've had one of those winding road careers. Um, I started my career in technology very early on in the internet days. I worked for companies um, like City Search, who some may have heard of. We were a city guide that sold websites. Um, I worked for NBC Internet, a TV network here in the US, and Active Networks. And so really cut my teeth at a very young age with a ton of responsibility, managing large teams and really big budgets and really big goals. Like if we didn't raise, you know, $10 $10 million, the doors would shut kind of thing. And so I had a very unique um, pedigree, I guess, of, yeah. of, you know, how I thought about business because of that. And then after many years in the internet space, I did a pivot and I followed my passion and I worked in the human potential world. So I worked for Tony Robbins um, for almost 10 years. I worked with Harvey McKay. Yeah, yeah. I worked with Harvey McKay, uh, Christopher Howard training, many others that people are very familiar with and did everything from production training, uh, coaching. I mean, you name it, pretty much did it all over the years. And then in about 2008, decided to start my own company where I did um, high-end consulting still for sort of, if you want to call famous or high level um, motivational speakers. Mm -hmm. And um, then in 2015, I went back to school. No, 2014, rather. I went back to school. I moved to New York City and I went to Columbia University to get my uh, certification in executive coaching. 
Mm. And so I did that for many years after, you know, coaching for a decade with Robbins and I have 10 different certifications in, in that realm at NLP and hypnotherapy and, and others. And then, um, you know, thought I was going to be an executive coach. And so yes. I worked in house on Wall street and I had a team of brokers that I coached and that was very interesting. It was sort of like. Yeah, if you've ever watched the show Billions, um, I literally had an office in a brokerage firm on Wall Street, and that was really yeah. exciting. And then uh, decided that I wanted to start a TV show. So I went to TV production school in conjunction with working um, as an executive coach and started a pilot, and it got picked up on cable um, in New York City. And so yeah. that's really how the impetus of Binge started is that we um, started as a cable TV show. We produced over 700 shows. We had a big yes. production team, um, you know, full suite, three camera, yes. you know, the whole nine yards. Yes. And, and then um, realized about three years into the journey, we're now in year seven of our business, mm -hmm. um, that production was very expensive, very stressful, and that yeah. cable was dying. And we decided to go full force into distribution because that's what people needed. Um, so we went into the distribution side of the business and focusing on smart TV outlets like Apple TV and Roku and Sony. Um, and that's where we are seven years later. We've won many awards. We work with hundreds of different clients, getting them into the streaming TV world. Um, you know, so an, an alternative to just having a YouTube channel or yes. Vimeo or anything which is great, but also we can get you more high level into that TV space. Absolutely. And and that was one of my questions. Um, people often ask, what's the difference between YouTube and streaming TV? Well, I'm going to let you explain the difference, um, okay. which it may seem subtle, but there are clearly defined differences between YouTube and streaming TV. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, from a technology standpoint, it uses a very similar technology. Mm. Um, so that notwithstanding, the differences really are YouTube is more of a social media platform. It's yes. unvetted. Anyone can, you know, 13 years and older can go on, create a channel, upload their video content. But then it's really up to you to grow an audience, to grow a following, to hit um, metrics so that you can start to play ads and earn ad, ad revenue and Ships. Um, smart TV is very different in that it's a lean back viewing. It is where people watch in their home. Um, you know, they, if you have Apple TV and you're an Apple TV viewer, well, they have 50 million subscribers on their platform. Mm. Now, when you're using YouTube or Facebook, and again, I think you should use all of them. I'm not against yes. them. It's not you know, one or the other. It's all works That's together. Right. But why is yeah, why smart TV is so important is that that audience is unique. Whereas like if I'm a fan of Tony, which I am, um, I watch, you know, I can check you out on Instagram. I can check out your yes. Facebook. I can watch your show. I can check you out on YouTube. There's all those places. It's going to be the same information. You're smart. So you're packaging it differently on each platform, yes. but it's sort of the same information. Whereas with smart TV, they're loyal viewers to that platform. Yes. So if you're paying for Apple TV, those 50 million people are watching within that infrastructure. Mm -hmm. If you're a Roku person, you're, yes. you know, 40 million subscribers there. If you're um, Amazon Fire, about 30 million subscribers there. Mm. That's a huge, huge number. It and is. so we don't require you to come in and you, you know, market and you shout it out and you're trying to grow your audience because you have to do what you're good at creating content. Mm. And so that's why smart TV is so valuable is we're putting you in a, at least a hundred different places that have a unique aggregated audience yes. so that you can get views on your content so that you can earn ad revenue so that you can do what you're great at. Fantastic. I love the way that the technology um, is is changing the way that we consume content. I love the way that we yeah. now have the choice about what we view and how we view it. And I love the opportunity that the streaming TV uh, creates for people. And Binge has been around long enough now for, and you've had that experience with, with Binge. You obviously believe that is the way of the future. And 
uh, companies like Binge will continue to grow and provide alternatives for content viewing for people and you obviously believe that that's the way of the future. Um, do you think that there's plenty of room for YouTube and social media along with the streaming? You Do you believe that they are interconnected and intertwined? I do. I mean, there's always, right, I always say there's an audience for everything. Mm -hmm. um, the issue, and we're starting to see, we're starting to see it shake out. I mean, we saw in the last, I hate to bring up any political yeah. topic, but we <laughs> yes. politics, right? We, we've yeah. seen the last two presidents use social media um, extremely effectively and, yeah. you know, some for good and some for bad. But I would say, I would argue Obama won the election mainly on social media, mainly on yes. finding the people where they were and how they communicate. And then Trump used social media in a different way. Yeah. Um, so just a, an example from our country here, but then also to see where that can be cut off. Right. So mm -hmm. you, you know, you put all your, in the case of Trump, you put all of his ducks Twitter. into Twitter, mm -hmm. got shut off when it needed to for the safety. And then he, you know, he doesn't have a platform. So I do think you need to be multi-platform. So if God forbid something goes yes. away, I know how could it happen? But what if Apple disappeared and yeah. then you're only on Apple TV or you're only on iTunes or you're, yeah. so it's really good to diversify. That's always been at the core of the fabric of our company. Um, I just think it's different in that a social media viewer expects something different than yes. a smart TV viewer. A smart TV viewer wants a little bit more higher production value content. Yes. And it, that doesn't have to be too expensive. Um, I mean, you have a beautiful set here. You could do so many things with this set. I can see where you could do, you know, like a, yes. a coffee table talk. Yes. You can do um, people on the couches like Oprah. Yes. You could do so many things. Yeah. with two iPhones and a, yes. you know, film student editor, yes. but um, smart TV does expect a little bit higher caliber of content where social media is just like, Hey guys, you know, I'm here. driving in my car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually think that the technology now and our, uh, you know, in terms of cameras and uh, lighting, it, it enables everyone to have that opportunity to, to create something that's uniquely theirs. So it doesn't have to yeah. be a huge, big production, does it? It can actually be something quite small, but quite special and unique to the particular person who's creating that content. Um, Binge has had some um, great success with their content producers. Can you tell us about some of the success stories with people putting their content on Binge? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's some of my favorite were in the early days of binge. So I'll start mm -hmm. there and then we'll work yes. out today. Um, because it's not just, you know, people always say, oh, I'm going to put my content up and I'm going to get this many views and I'm going to get, you know, this much ad revenue. That is great. And that is one way to make money. But, you know, I know from just knowing you and the relationship with you, you do many other things. So yeah. by putting your content on all these platforms, yes, you may have ad revenue, but someone also may come to you and want you to sponsor, you know, a product that's all about integrity and all about yes. women's empowerment. Mm -hmm. Or somebody may come to you for coaching, a large consulting deal. Mm -hmm. So um, a couple of things, we had a show called Top Docs, or we have a show called Top Docs, and it's an integrative medical specialist out of Kansas City. Yeah. And he did an episode interviewing um, somebody with an autoimmune condition, and a mm -hmm. woman in South Africa saw it, flew to Kansas City, Missouri, and worked with him. I think she paid him a $10,000 retainer. And that was just one show. So that yes. was very worthwhile um, advertising, even though it wasn't meant that way. Yeah. Um, from a content perspective, we have sold off. We had one show called Tokens, which yes. was a, a web series of 15 minute increments um, out of Canada. We had it up for about a week and then we sold it outright. They wanted exclusivity um, to a platform called Indie. Uh, what was it called? Sorry, no. Um, ah, not Netflix. <laughs> Indie, I think it's um, they bought it outright. I have to check the name. Don't That's anyone quote okay. me on that. But we sold it. It's on our media kit, the testimonial. Yes, yes. But we sold it very quickly, like that outright. Um, we've had other shows. We just submitted six of our shows to Tubi, which is a very large scale um, yes. place to watch content. Very much like Pluto, Tubi. They just picked up six of our channels. So that's very exciting. Um, we've had, what else did we have? We had one show called After Forever, 
um, that yes. is also a web series. It's very well done. They've won six Emmys mm. um, and they put their show up. They were on Amazon Prime for many, many long times, we'll say, yes. and they weren't making money. They put us, uh, they put their show up on binge and sold, I think 25 or 30 um, episodes in a day like that within the first 24 hours. So, oh, wow. you know, we have things like that that happen all of the time. Um, we've had, you know, we work with over a hundred different networks and then now we're starting to do linear platforms, which are like the two B's. Um, we have other platforms that we, we work with hero go TV. We work yes. with freebie TV. So our team not only distributes your content, places ads on it, gets it to a hundred different platforms, but we have a team in-house that represents the content for any licensing deals on any other platform. Yeah. So that's really our goal is to get the shows, you know, as many different places as possible so that we can generate ad revenue for our clients. Absolutely. I love, um, I've loved the concept of Binge since I was first introduced to it. And I just think that it enables people to dream a bit bigger and to think yeah. a bit bigger and dream and and believe that creating their content for um, people is more important and it doesn't have to be that professional uh, big high ticket type content it can be just well done wonderful content that people love to watch yeah. and listen to um, and I think that binge is perfect for that um, some of those shows that you've uh, sold did the um, buyers connect with binge directly or do they go to the actual content owners or they go they go directly to binge and go hey we really like that and you do the negotiation on behalf of the content owner exactly we do everything yeah. so we have a whole team focused on the licensing and distribution so that's mm -hmm. their whole role that's what they do we have relationships established with many of the big distributors yeah. um anytime we onboard a channel then we sit down with our distribution team and we say okay here's what we've got here's where we think it would be great but reach out to all of our distributors see what's hot mm -hmm. um we do everything from the big channels like Tubi, but then we also do more obscure things like website um if yes. you've ever been on a website and you, there's a little video up in the corner we work with one distributor called middle block that takes a lot of our shows and oh. they use that as a retirement strategy to keep people on the page so you know there's many different things that we do but we've spent seven years opening every door in yes. the industry so that we quickly and effectively get all of that content out there yeah and bonnie with your diverse background and let's just for a moment go back into um coaching with tony robbins i'm guessing that all of that training and all of that experience has set you up for managing uh, the team that you have now? Very much so. I mean, my poor team. <laughs> They're amazing. But they I definitely are amazing. Have the mind They're amazing, but I also, I just come from the mindset. I mean, number one, we try to only hire extraordinary people. So that's yeah. just the bar. Yeah. But I am the quintessential entrepreneur where all night long, my mind is going, I'm thinking of things. We were talking personally before the call and I, my yes. daughter's had me up since four. So while I'm playing with her, I'm thinking, oh, what if we did this? Or what if we did that? So by the time they get into the office, they have 20 voice texts, you know, <laughs> do this, do that, do this, do that. And they're amazing at it. Um, but it, yeah, I mean, it's really all about like working for Robbins, working for all of this mindset gurus they yes. teach you that you can when you can dream it you can do it if you work hard enough and that's so right. that's really our philosophy and a lot of times especially in the early days you know, we had people come trying to buy the company and they would ask our head count what are you about 100 125 i'm like there's four of us <laughs> you know, See, back I then just, and it was i love that because yeah. people often say to me oh you've got a, a big team and i'm like well no there's 2.5 of us <laughs> and they're <Right>. like oh <laughs> okay <laughs> and but you you become very um interconnected and I know um the girls that I work with they have the capacity to think as I think or I'll they'll be I'll be thinking of something and they'll be messaging me about the same thing and um I'm not sure if it that is a female thing I don't, I, I'm not sure, but I know that it happens with me. I'm wondering if it happens with your team too, that that whole, they'll be thinking of the same thing that you're thinking about 
almost at the same time. Yeah. That synchronicity of thought. It's so true. And and like Allison, who's our chief content officer, who you have interacted with, and I believe you've interacted with Daniela yeah. as well. Yes. Um, Alice and I will cross, voice text is really the preferred method of communication in our company Same. because a lot of, we're off calls all day, so we'll do a quick voice text, and yes. that way you don't lose any translation, yes. you hear the tonality, but sometimes we'll send each other a similar text. I'm like, hey, whatever happened with XYZ, and she's texting me, oh, I was thinking with XYZ, we should, and so yeah, we get that a lot, um, and just really the proactivity, I love yeah. seeing this is kind of my style with everything. Um, it was funny, a friend who was very close with our family, he said to someone the other day, one of my cousins, he's like, yeah, she has a very loose management style with her children. And my kids are very, very good, but I let them, I give them a large, kids. you know, to roam. And then if it looks like they're going to go off a cliff, then I'm, I'm very quick with the grab. And, you know, I, I, I just, that's how I like to do my team. You know, it's like, we provide excellent training. We give you very clear goals. And then my perfect day is if I do not hear from you until, you know, the end of the day, and you're telling me what you accomplished, because I understand that they have stuff to do. They don't want me breathing down their neck. I have tons of stuff to do. So Um, it's just a really great way, I think, to, you know, to be there for people, but then also just empower them to do what they need to do. And a lot of times they come up with solutions that I wouldn't have thought of or that are better yes. than I was thinking. Yeah. So yeah, it, it tends to work for us. I'm curious too, you've worked in highly um, male dominated industries and now Binge is this wonderful feminine uh, group and energy. Um, What's your favorite? Are they good in both? <sighs> yes. Yeah. I mean, we don't, we don't not hire men. We just no, hire no. women, no, you know, no. again. Yeah. It's just, um, you know, I learned so much. I learned a ton in the business world and I was in a, I would argue to say probably a 95 to 98% male dominated field yeah. and still am yeah. for the majority of my career. And it's interesting to me always like when, you know, I'm such a go-getter and I'm like, okay, we're on the call. Let's just get this, this, this and done. And, and men just like talk around stuff. Oh, did you see the game? Did you do this? And then they're like, okay, boom. And then they, they like just shoot at the goal yes. or whatever that yes. it is. Whereas we just have a very different style. Everyone's efficient, mm-hmm. but we can kind of ebb and flow and, you know, work together and get it done and understand that someone's child might have the stomach flu that day and someone yeah. else might have this, but cover each other multitask it is different isn't it it is different I prefer it I you know I the it's 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 interesting a lot of times you know you loot not you have to work harder to gain the respect or you just don't get it and I just sort of sit back and I laugh and then they see what I've accomplished and it's like oh uh, okay wow she actually does have a very yeah uh, I was gonna say Bonnie from my perspective, the media industry seems to be very male dominated. Male network um, bosses, uh, TV owners, um, top rating shows. Uh, uh, there's a lot of male dominated top rating shows. Podcasters, there's a lot of top rated podcasters. I think that we women need to take that on. And that's one of the things that excited me about Binge was it was female-led and women-led and I just think that we have the capacity to compete or to offer alternatives that make good sense and provide those platforms where people can uh, engage with a greater wider audience across the world and allow them to be their creative selves and I think that's the power of binge isn't it it is. Yeah. Yeah. We work really hard at, you know, at keeping that. That's always been since day one. When we were doing production, we had anywhere from 20 to 25 people working with us. And I think we had one, no, we had two males. We had one on the soundboard and then we had a, an assistant, mm-hmm. but it was mainly women. And it, yeah. there was never a cat fight. There was never a, blah, 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 blah. you know, it was just very cohesive and very efficient. Um, everyone did four to five roles. And yes. it, just, it works for us. 
I was going to say, I think it that I think it's it, it, that multitasking because my my husband will often say to me, I can only do one thing at a time. Stop, and I forget because I will have this happening, that happening, that thought happening, and it's okay because that's the way that my brain works. And you just go through yeah. it, and you do that, and you do that, and you do that, and he'll just often say to me, no, 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 I can only do one thing at a time. I think that for women, that's the way our brains are created, to do multiple things and to get it done. Um, after all, we have to raise babies, and that is the biggest multitasking role that we ever do, we ever do, an incredibly important one, but it does teach you multitasking, doesn't it? Oh, it sure does. Yep, it sure does. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I love, I love that we have that same synergy yeah. in our companies. Yes, absolutely. Bonnie, um, in talking about binge, you have some special offers for um, binge or people that are interested in getting their content onto binge. Can you tell us about those? Yeah, absolutely. So the way that we work is we work with content creators. We build them a channel on our platform that's branded for their content. And if you go to Binge Networks TV, um, definitely check out Tony TV. You'll see what I'm talking about. Thank you. Um, and you can, upload, <laughs> you can upload your video content and we distribute it on a hundred different platforms mm -hmm. around the world, like yeah. Apple, Sony, Samsung, Sharp, LG, big platforms that you're all familiar with. And um, then we have our team that represents your content for the one year period. Um, we charge a retainer for that process. For the first year, we build out apps. We we literally do everything. It's turnkey it's for true. you. It is. Yep. <laughs> and Absolutely. so we're offering a <laughs> we're offering a twenty five hundred dollar discount um, to your listeners wow. off the year package. Fantastic. So yeah, if anyone's interested. Definitely just email me if anyone is interested. Um, I, if you can send out my email when you send this we out, will. or I'm happy to give Bonnie at Binge Channels, and we're happy to honor that for t just let us know you're with Tony TV. Fantastic. We, um, when the interview view goes out and anyone is watching this, just look in the comments below and you will see all the connections. You'll see Bonnie's email. You'll see how to connect with Binge. And we'll also give you directions on um, how to connect with the team, my team, and also where you can watch Binge, where you can find it. There are apps galore everywhere. So wherever and whatever platform that you want to watch Binge, binge from you can do that so from your phone your ipad the tv um and it looks great on tv i might add binge does and uh it's a wonderful place to go searching for content that you might be interested in um i know that we will have a big announcement particularly from my team to, uh, a little bit further down the track and that's largely due to the work that Bonnie and the team do at Binge Networks. So in closing, Bonnie, um, and I'm conscious of time, um, what's been the best thing about starting Binge Networks TV? Oh gosh, to have to pick just one. I have to just say before I say the one thing, yes. I, it was so hard not to spill the beans on your big news. This whole interview, I was like, <laughs> so excited. I bet you guys, it's big. Um, it is. The best thing, it is big. And um, I'm trying not to talk about it too, Bonnie. I'm like, no, no, this is, this is Bonnie. This is exactly. Exactly. Like, stay in your seat. Stay in your I know. Seat. I'm so um, excited. Jumping out of my seat. I think the biggest thing has been... Um, the evolution. So watching how we evolved from one TV show to a network, to distribution on a hundred platforms, to launching networks for other people, to building over 300 smart TV apps, um, just to watch that evolution. And it feels like as the owner, founder of the company, it feels like every time we hit a, a brick wall, we hit the point where, and I know we're all entrepreneurs, we know yes. this feeling where you're just like, I'm over mm. this, I can't do it anymore. Yes. I've come to the end of the road. Yes. Every time we hit that, it seems like the next evolution happens. It's about to happen. Um, yeah. And so it's really, that's been the best part of every time, you know, just we've reinvented four or five different times, always yeah. keeping where we were, but then adding in different layers. And it's been really great to see. And it's been really great to see the team come along with that, to see people 
immediately pivot to that level or like, great, now we do this. Oh, great. And I know they're overworked and they're maxed, you know, <laughs> yes. like, and genuinely they mean it because they're just as excited. They want to see all of our clients succeed just as we're having success. So that's been the best thing. Bonnie, thank you so much for coming on the show today to tell us all about Binge Networks. Um, I am such a fan of the network and as you alluded to, we have some big news coming up, but that's um, all we have time for today. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Um, Stay with me for a moment after the show. Thank you everyone for listening today. This is Tony Lontis and you're listening to Radio Tony. We've been talking to Bonnie Brugner today from Binge Networks. TV and that yours is your lot for this week. Bye for now. Yeah.